Okay, today I'm going to talk about scams in Thailand and I'll tell you about them and and whether or not I ever fell for any scams. I hope this light isn't weird. It's uh, shooting off my computer up like this. I hope it don't look like you know how when you hold a flashlight under your face like that. I think it might look like that. The first scam is scam number one. If I'm going to dinner, my whole family and village is going to dinner. <laughs> And I mentioned this in another video recently, and that's what kind of uh, reminded me about this one. But what happens is you find somebody that you like, wherever you are, you ask them to go to dinner. Instead of just her showing up, it's going to be at least one other person. Um, it might be two or three people. It might be a whole family of people. It might be 12, 15 people that show up at the restaurant for you to pay. And uh, it's not really a scam, it's, I mean, it's, I don't know what it is really. It's, uh, <laughs> it happened to me twice. Uh, a lot of people showed up and I, you know, I wouldn't pay it uh, the first time. So what happens is Thais, this, this happens like in Ubon or Sisaket or Konkan or somewhere like that, right? Mahasarakam or something like that, like a like a fairly backwoods area, you know, not nothing like Bangkok or um, or Phuket, you know, Patong Beach or something like that. It wouldn't happen there probably. Might have a friend come along or something, maybe two. But uh, in general, you know, I think that just in Isan, it's just that uh, they're so excited like to go out with you, and then they want to bring their friends to build face as well, so that. You know, whoever you asked ends up building face, you know, among the whole, the, whoever comes because it's like free meal. <laughs> so, yeah, so that happens. It's, it's not so much a scam or it could be a scam. It depends on the person, I guess. In general, it's not really a scam. So don't look at it that way. Um, whenever you ask somebody out to dinner or something, clarify, you know, it's you coming to dinner. Yes, one person. And they'll say yes or no. They'll say, can I bring my friend? And I, uh, you know, if, if you really like the girl, you might let her bring her friend because then she saves face because she, she's not going out specifically with a foreigner by herself, which looks like she, everybody knows then in town she's dating that guy. That's what they think. And, uh, you know, you may not be dating her yet. So just keep all that in mind. Number two. The duty-free shop at Suvarnabhumi Airport. Uh, some people have said they've been scammed there. And um, I, I don't know. I'm certainly not going to say that they were because, um, you know, that's, I can't possibly talk bad about a business or a person. But uh, some people are claiming that they got scammed there. So I would suggest that you uh, either, one, be very careful in there that it doesn't look like you're taking something or uh, especially that you're taking something. You're not getting blamed for taking something. Um, personally, myself, I never go in there and never saw a reason to. But uh, some people like to shop in there. Number three, the gem scams. So this happens often in Bangkok whenever you're, especially Bangkok, other places as well, maybe Phuket or maybe Pattaya. But um, what happens is, you're in a cab or you're in a tuk-tuk more likely, uh, maybe even on the back of a motorbike taxi, and they're taking you where you wanted to go or you think they are, but actually they're, they may take you straight to a gem shop, like a, a diamond shop or something like that. Or they might just try to convince you gradually to go there because they're having a sale. And uh, this is more like um, the, taxi, the taxi guy gets a commission from the shop for as many, they get a commission off people that they bring there. I don't know if it's per person or if it's per, you know, based on how much that you buy, but they get something, they get a commission in some way. And so it's a scam because you shouldn't ask for it, but some of them will just drive right up to the gem shop and stop and say, oh, get out and look for five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, go see if you can find anything you like. There's a big sale today. You know, and some people are like, oh yeah, let me go look. So uh, just be careful about it. It's, it's, it can be a, it's a scam because the gem shops are not any real bargain. That's, that's the general consensus is that you're not really getting some great deal. Uh, they might have 150% off that day, but <laughs> that'd be them giving you money, right? 
I mean, they might have extreme amounts of money off, extreme percentage off, but they're still making great money off you. So um, in a way, you know, it's a scam. Scam number four, the Bangkok litter police. So there's certain areas in Bangkok where uh, the police will hang out and just wait for you to throw your cig cigarette butt down and then they'll hit you for like, I think it was a 2,000 baht fine for a long time. I don't know if it still is, but uh, you know, 2,000 baht is $60. It's not, not exactly fun to pay. And then um, it's, it's not really a scam. They're, they're in their right to do it, but it's just certain places and they just focus on that. It's kind of, so it's kind of like a, it's kind of like speeding tickets and it's kind of like pulling people over for not having a helmet. It's kind of like pulling people over for not having a seatbelt. They're just pulling you out. I mean, they're just stopping you because you're, you're littering on the ground right on right the street and you're not allowed to. See, many people, they changed the rule recently and then uh, now you cannot do it and many people just didn't know for a long time. Saturday night, it's just a nonstop stream of these idiots. Number five is travel agents. So many travel agents, especially in Bangkok, will charge you a couple times what you should pay. So just, just be careful, look at the receipts, make sure this receipt is right. And occasionally the entire package that they're selling is a scam. I mean, how would you know, right? You go into a travel agent, they set you up on a uh, tour to Krabi with four island tour, go to, the, go to the waterfall, go to the crystal pool, do all these things, do like six tours, plus your flight and everything included for like 4,000 baht. And you, you're like, yeah. So you book it for your whole family of six, you give them 24,000 baht, and there is no package like that because you know there couldn't possibly exist like that. And so you get scammed for the whole thing and then you go back to Bangkok from Kirby, assuming you even had a, they'll probably give you the one-way ticket you know, to get out of there. But, uh, and then you go back to Bangkok, try to find the place and, and it's either not there or different people took over or something. I mean, it's, it could be something like that. So be careful about booking a tour, especially like from one place to go to another for like an extended duration, you know, something over 10,000 baht or so. I mean, that's $300 and, uh, you know, it would suck to lose it, right? Scam number six, Bangkok tuk-tuks. So they have a whole lot of different scams. One of them is that they, they will not even take you to where you're going in a tuk-tuk. They'll just drive you straight to the Indian uh, suit place where you're supposed to go and like, they want you to go and like look for suits because they make some money. The guy told me that they pay his gas. So they give him like 50 baht in gas or so every, every person that he brings there. So he, he does it for sure every time, you know, if it's on the way, he just drives right in there. And uh, so if this happens to you, you might feel bad for the person, you know, because you think, ah, oh, this guy has nothing at all. So you might say, yeah, just go, I'll, I'll walk around for five minutes and then you can make your 50 baht. Or you can just say, I'll give you 50 baht, just go straight to wherever I just told you to go, you know? Because 50 baht, what's that? Not even $2. Uh, you know, it's a scam. It's a way that they make extra money. A lot of these guys you don't really want to argue with in the tuk-tuks because they're, they're, um, they're on meth, crystal meth and they're all wired up and antsy and like, you know, they can't, they can't deal with like no or something. I mean, I've been, you know, many Bangkok tuk-tuks that are like that. These, these people are all on meth. Not all of them, but Jesus. Uh, there's a serious epidemic there. But uh, so up to you if you do it or not, you could get pissed and like insist that they take you to where you're going. Uh, hopefully it doesn't end wrong. Scam number seven, a Thai helping you out. This happens often, happens just about everywhere that I've seen. And to us, it's a scam. To them, it's just making some extra money off the foreigner. So what happens is you'll be, say you're in one store and you're looking for something. Say I'm looking for uh, some kind of socks. They don't have them at that store, but they know where some of those socks are. So they'll say, oh, wait right here, I'll, I'll get for you. And you're like, uh, automatically you know they're going to the other store, they're gonna buy them or borrow them to bring them to see if they can sell them to you. 
If they do, they're going to jack up the price because they need a commission when you could have just walked in the next store. You're probably going there anyway if you're shopping along the street, right? And uh, you could have walked in and bought them for less money. So it's a scam because you're, you're going to pay more. But in a way, they know exactly where these socks are. They can go get them for you and you'll pay another 50 baht or whatever it is and the price of uh, not knowing your way around exactly, right? Uh, this happens for just about everything. Can happen for food, can happen for going to massage somewhere, can happen for anything, literally anything. I've had it happen so many times, you know? Say you get on a taxi, tuk-tuk or whatever, and you say, take me to, um, uh, I want to go get pizza at this, uh, I want to go get pizza. Oh, I know where a place is, I'll take you. So they go, but they walk in with you, they talk in Thai and they say, oh, I brought this guy, uh, can I get a commission? Because he said, you know, he didn't want to go any, he just wanted to go get pizza, I could have brought him anywhere, I'm bringing him to you, maybe you can give me like 20, 40 baht or something. And then, you know, of course, you're going to, you're going to get charged that. Uh, at the restaurant because they have to make it up. So that's how that works. It, it happens so much. It's for little money. It's not for huge money usually unless it's some big ticket item or something, but uh, it does get on your nerves. I mean, it can really get on your nerves after a while. It's like, you know, they're like, oh, I'll go. No, I'm like, no, don't go anywhere. I'll go get it myself. You know, I'll go look around myself so I can save the money. But so that's kind of a bummer. Border crossings, scam number eight. Um, how much you can, how much duty free you can take back across the border? And I'll have to tell that that's gonna be my story number three. Yeah, good. So I have another, I have another video to do after this. Um, so border crossings, they make it um, ambiguous how much you can take across the border. Like if you're going to Burma or if you're going to Laos or going to, to Malaysia or something. And you know, there's usually a certain amount of cigarettes or, or uh, alcohol or something that you can take back to Thailand and um, not get charged for it. So sometimes it's not very clear and sometimes you'll get stopped for it. Number nine, sex show scams. So basically these guys, especially Patong, I haven't been in Pattaya that much, but Patong Beach, they, there's people that stand there with like laminated cards of photos of like girls like shooting ping pong balls and all that. And they're like, oh, come on up just for one drink, first drink free or something like that. So you go and uh, it's a scam because you're gonna get hit with a bill that's like fantastic. I mean, you might sit there for 15 minutes and watch ping pong balls fly across the room, get your free drink and think you're gonna leave, uh, but you haven't paid the bill yet because there is a bill and the bill is for the show. So the show might be 800 baht a person. If you're there with three buddies, you're gonna pay 2,400 baht. It's, uh, there's always something, man. You don't wanna, you don't want to, you don't wanna go into somewhere where somebody like convinces you to go in because already you're gonna get scammed uh, in, at the beach and, and places like that. Uh, just be very careful. Even if you're careful, you're going to pay the money. Uh, <laughs> another thing is that, and I don't know if I have it on here or not. I may, I may not. But another thing is that they jack up the prices of the drinks and they might add more drinks to your bill than you had. And then you're going to pay it because, you know, you're either going to fight with the guys that are there that are going to fight you for it, or you're just going to pay it and leave and go talk to tourist police. Um, better that you do the latter, I mean, for sure. <laughs> scam number 10, holiday club scam in Phuket and Pattaya. Beautiful girls will offer you a scratch off lottery ticket to see if you might win something valuable. You try it and of course you do win. You win a four hour sales presentation where they try to sell you something like uh, share, uh, like a condo, um, what's it called, share? Boy, I've been out of uh, real estate for a hell of a long time. A uh, share, 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 timeshare. And uh, so you win like this thing where you gotta sit through this four hour thing while they try to drill you and, and sell you something. So it's not really, you don't win anything, you won a scam. Scam 11, the tailors, uh, they, 
they measure you up, they tell you what you're going to get. When you get it, it's different cloth or something, or the, or the measurements are messed up and they won't give you a reimbursement for it. And uh, you're out. And you're out the money. Number 12, roofies in the drink scam. Um, they can put roof, rohypnol, um, a drug into the drinks or on the girl's breast or you know, so many places and, and some other drugs as well. But, uh, you know, you'll be drugged and, and robbed, you know, at your, at your hotel, your motel or uh, wherever you are. So you gotta be really careful about that. You don't wanna take girls that are freelancers walking on the street, much better that you got her at a bar so that way you, you can go back to the bar later and said, this girl did it to me, you know? Okay, that's all the scams I have listed here. Good thing because I'm at like 17 minutes already. Um, have I ever been taken advantage of? Yeah, by the tuk tuks in Bangkok, like going to different places. One time, a uh, one time, a uh, yellow cab told me that oh, the um, the Grand Palace is closed today. Uh, we'll take you somewhere else. And I think they were going to a to a gem place or something. And I was like, nah, I'll just get out here and walk around. As I walked around, I noticed, hey, the Grand Palace is open. What, what's this guy talking about? So that was a close one. Um, I didn't even mention that in, in the list, but that would, be, that would be a big one, is that they tell you that some place is closed, and yet it isn't, but they just want to redirect you to somewhere else where they can get a commission off you uh, for something. It can be as simple as walking around the store, they'll get a commission. Uh, they don't, you don't actually have to buy something. So yeah, that's about it. The worst scam I ever heard of was, uh, that'll be another story. I guess that'll be story number four, but it'll be my Thai friend who, uh, who was in a card game. So uh, I'll, do, I'll do those other two videos right now too, so I can knock them out real quick and get these set up for, uh, for this week. Okay, so I hope hearing about those scams helped you out and hopefully will help you to avoid some in the future. All right, cheers.